Okay, in this video clip, we're going to set up a straddle strategy, which is basically a combination of a long call position and a long put, uh, both sharing the same exercise. Um, now, this could be set up to be a volatility play, uh, and um, we'll demonstrate a little bit some of the sensitivity here to the maturity and to the volatility, and then also uh, stock price. Uh, so the basic element here would involve uh, setting out um, a representative uh, set of possible terminal stock prices. So we have to consider uh, what would happen under a variety of different circumstances. In other words, under a range of different stock prices, uh, what would the value of the payoff be on the uh, trading strategy? OK, so we're building uh, what we want to replicate here is what we have in the diagram. OK, so we want to consider the long call and the long pot at the same exercise and then uh, net out, if you like, the combination. OK, um, so uh, starting off, then we need uh, a set of underlying asset prices. And uh, we would need to set out um, uh, an exercise. Okay, so also we would need to incorporate in what the value of the margin here is, the value of the premium. And to do that, we, we, we will use Black-Scholes. Now, the Black-Scholes model, I've already got set out and Black-Scholes call and then for the pot, we have something similar. So we calculate D1, D2 the same way, and we estimate uh, the black shows. Uh, in the link below this video, I'll provide a link to that code. Uh, okay, so if you want to input in that VBA code, I'll leave a link, a hyperlink below where you can find that, and that should be on Vinegar Hill. Um, okay, so let's go in then to uh considering uh, how we would work out the value of uh, the black schultz model and we need some parameter inputs so there's an skr sigma right so if we copy that we just put it above or we can put it here for the moment and for our parameter inputs we need an s we need a k we need r we need uh, a volatility, so sigma, dividend, uh, yield, and a maturity, okay? And if we're estimating, and again, we're doing this because we want to have some value that we can attribute to the value of the call and the value of the pot. Okay, so, um, okay, um, let's go put in some representative values, 100, for this asset price, the current asset price, the current stock price is 100. The risk free rate, we put it 5%. The sigma, 0 0.2. The wallet, the dividend yield, we'll put at zero. And the time period, the maturity equal to one year. And we might insert a column here. So insert and get the value for call. Okay, so the using black shoulds, black. Schultz call, we've been auto prompt from the use defined uh, function, and then we'll map in the arguments. So the stock price is 100, 100 risk free rate is 100, sigma is equal to 0 0.2, dividend is equal to zero, and the maturity of the contract is equal to one year. We hit OK, we get a value of 1045. We could drag that across, or we could just basically set equal to the preceding cells, drag down, get the same value. So if I change anything here, it updates down below. And then for the black shoulds pot, if we drag across, we get the black shoulds call, of course, but just to change to a pot, we can just double click here for so because we've already entered the user-defined function for the pot, 
it's available and we can call down. Okay, so to get the value of the call then initially, we're going to run with maximum, maximum of the asset price, the terminal asset price minus the exercise K and zero. Okay, so that's the intrinsic value of the option, ignoring any premium that is going to be incurred. So very simply, that's the maximum of S. So if we highlight the correct cell minus the X size, which we've set out here for the call option as being uh, 100. And then F4 to lock the cell reference, comma, zero, close bracket. Then that's a zero. We drag that down. And if we want to load in then to graph that very simply insert and then go to our scatter graph. Um, and we have a few options here, but let's go with this one. Okay, so that's our graph, uh, great. Now, if we want to incorporate in the premium, okay, it's just simply the same again, equal to what we had before uh, minus the premium of that 1045. We'll lock again the, the reference to the cell where we estimated the premium. And then we drag that down and we get the same basic shape as before, but a different set of values. So what we should obtain is the intrinsic value with the premium will look like this. Okay, so if we were to graph that, just right click, select data, and we can add, and we can say uh, call with premium. And then on the horizontal axis, we have the stock price. And then on the vertical axis, we have the payoff. So that's the column we just created. Okay, and we can see when we map it out that it's following in line with what we have here. So that's fine. Now we can remove the blue, right? And there's no issues. Um, but we need to get for the straddle strategy to work here, we need also to input in the pot. Okay, so I'll do that directly this time. I'll just say uh, maximum of S, sorry, K, the exercise, the exercise minus S, the terminal stock price or the asset price uh, zero. So we lock it at, uh, it cannot be less than zero. And then we subtract away uh, the premium also, right? So uh, that would entail what just going maximum, maximum as before maximum as before but this time we're using the exercise we're leading with the exercise and it's this one okay and it will f4 premium here is 557. Okay, so let's um, just take that away, but we need to F4 that as well. We need to F4. Okay, and then we should drag down. And then to include in, select, add, uh, so put with premium, and then on the vertical horizontal axis, the terminal stock prices on the vertical vertical axis, the payoff that includes in the premium for the pot, the cost, the purchase price of the pot. Okay, so that's beginning to look a little bit uh, familiar. Okay, um, 
the we've sort of uh, there is a small difference that the put here is higher in value and the call is less valuable in terms of premium. We can adjust that in a moment. Um, but we now want to see the combination and our portfolio, right? So that's easy to estimate. Um, the combination or portfolio is just the sum of the two. So we add this plus the pot, right? So the call and the pot combined with the premiums, just add both. And then we will insert, select data, and then add, and we can say combination, right? It's the, it's the both payoffs combined together. And we have uh, on the horizontal axis, the asset price, and then on the vertical axis, it is the combination. So it's the sum of the call and the pot payoffs and their premiums. And hit okay. And we can see we get a straddle strategy. Okay, so we can uh, add our legends and we can put them below, might be easier to follow. So it's below, fine. And then we'll just drag this over here and you can see basically we've replicated the payoff, right? Um, now, if we want to, for instance, uh, consider a situation where the uh, interest rate, where the put option was more valuable than the call, then if we reduce uh, the stock price maybe to 90 starting off, we can reverse, we can make the put premium, the put premium higher than the call premium. So that's just, just really a product of what we started off as the initial, the original stock price. Okay. Um, and uh, if we uh, increase it, then of course we make the call option more valuable, 1110. You can see the call option becomes really va uh, valuable. Um, but we were looking at here where the put option is more valuable. Okay, so let's go to 90, right? And uh, you can see our straddle strategy, our straddle strategy is the same. We could also, uh, we could also increase the volatility here. So if we went to 30%, that would have the effect of increasing the premium. And if we made it 40%, you can see what's happening. The premiums get higher and higher. And so in order to make money here, you've got to clear a bigger region. If the premium is very low, let's say 10%, which would be quite a small amount of premium, you can see we don't have to go that far before we can start making money in terms of the gray being in positive territory. Ultimately, the final payoff here is the gray. The combination is a portfolio of the two. And if the um, time period folds also, right? Um, we're getting something similar and we could put that to, okay. So you, you can see the dynamic here. If we increase the time period uh, to one, and if we increase the volatility, uh, you can see that it takes a larger region. We have to go outside. The stock price has to jump quite dramatically away from what we started at and from the exercise here. They're both the same. In order for this strategy to become profitable at expiry. Okay, so obviously this is could be seen as a volatility play and that as the volatility increases, we would expect uh, those bigger jumps would produce higher profits, all else being equal with a straddle type setup. Okay, so that's the basic implementation of a straddle strategy. It's a combination of a long call and a long put with the same exercise.